Jaime Garza was a wild swinging knockout artist from California from the early 1980s and if he were competing today he would no doubt have been a superstar with the highlights of his knockouts going viral on social media. Now he grew up in a family of 11 children uh, raised in Pacoima, California. His father worked as a construction worker to support the 11 kids. He mandated that the boys in the family be tough. And Jaime had to learn how to fight early in life in order to fend off the bullies in the neighborhood. Now, four of his six brothers were amateur boxers, but uh, Jaime was the only one who really got after the sport seriously as a pro. Uh, his family would eventually move to a tiny town in Texas called Ivana. Uh, Gar Gar Jaime would accompany them, but uh, he'd eventually return back to Southern California, move in with an uncle because he knew that his future was in boxing and in fighting professionally at the uh, Los Angeles Olympic. So he would turn pro under the guidance of uh, the legendary Benny Giorgino, and Garza would go undefeated for over four years before getting his shot on national television. In June of 1982, uh, CBS viewers were introduced to Garza, who at the time could be considered boxing's best-kept secret. He was a, a knockout artist from California, and he would be taking on another knockout artist in New York's uh, Carmelo Negron. Uh, Negron had a record of 18-1 and one with all 18 by knockout. Uh, so this was a fight that had Slugfest written all over it. Oh, Garza weighed in at 122 pounds. He stands five, six, and one half against the five, two, and three quarters of Negron, who weighed in at 121 and a quarter, both of them making the weight easily at 122 pounds. Garza, born in Santa Cruz, now living back in California after leaving Texas. His older brother was also a boxer, and his dad wanted them both to have a shot at a pro career under Benny Giorgino, but Jaime, the more talented of the two, and his uh, dad said, well, if you don't take them both, I won't let either one go back to L.A. Jaime decided he better go on his own, and he has done so. Carmelo Negron, 18-1, and one, his only loss to Bernabe Montanez in Puerto Rico, and he has wins over Davy Vasquez and Baby Kid Chocolate. Garza in white and Negron in red. The referee is Richard Green from Las Vegas, scoring on the 10-point must system under the Nevada State Commission rules, and the judges today are Lou Tabbitt, Paul Smith, and Hal Miller, all from Las Vegas. Big left hand of Garza. Negron has to get inside the stop. He can't stay out there at long range or he will get knocked out. Watching Negron in the gym, he knows that he, he can get inside and throw punches while he's doing it. And uh, the question, too, will be who can take the other guy's shots best in the early going because we know they're going to land. And that's why we expect somebody is going to finish this bout on the canvas. Right now, Negron is backing up, Tim, which could be fatal. He has to get underneath and move inside and try to move Garza back. Garza wants him at a distance, of course, to land the big blows you saw on the videotape a few moments ago of some of his earlier bouts. There's a solid left that rocked Negron. Garza's big left hook knocked Negron backwards. That is some left hook, and it snaps out. It crackles. And a good stiff jab, showing it there in a solid right hand. Negron counters back to the chin. Oh. Another solid right hand lee right to the cheekbone of Negron. Garza's had the better of it in the early going. Negron is standing up straight when he jabs, Tim. He has to jab up. He's trained by your great former champion, Emil Griffith, just for the last couple of fights. And we noticed watching him work out that he was trying to get him to move his head. There he takes a solid left, and that may have opened a cut. Yes, it did. Tim. Over the right eye of Carmelo Negron. Well, in the gym, Griffith had him moving his head, moving his head, but in the fight, he's standing straight. And that's why he's been getting tagged by Garza, and there is a cut over the left eye already here in the first round with under a minute to go. Right on the corner of the right eye of Carmelo Negron. Negron is going in straight up, Tim. He's not bending his legs, not moving that head at all. Jaime Garza, unbeaten in 34 bouts. He's had a lot of experience, not against uh, the toughest guys in the division, but uh, he's in against one of the genuine tough ones in the division right now, number seven ranked Negron. Aiming for a title shot against Wilfredo Gomez, WBC champion, Leo Cruz, the newly crowned WBA champion. Won the title from Sergio Palma last week on CBS. 
There goes Nadal. Nadal straight in against him. And Every time he stands, he stands straight up. Solid left hook landed, just as you had him walking in. We're in the final seconds of round one. Big round for Garza. Round number two from the Hacienda Hotel in Las Vegas. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy, two super bantamweights, two of the very best in their division. Negron on the right in red. Jaime Garza, now on the right of your screen in white. He had the better of the first round. And I know uh, Emil Griffith doing some talking to Negron while he worked on that cut by his right eye, and I would uh, guess that you would guess what Emil was telling him. Well, Tim, he certainly was telling him to move that head, get inside, and stay there. And be the busy Carmelo Negron that he has been successfully in 18 knockout victories. Stars are looking very confident, very poised, using that distance where he likes to be. He's tall for a super bantam, and Carmelo Negron is a little shorter than the average. Warning for a low blow to Negron from referee Richard Green. Negron is surprising me, Tim. He's moving around more than he should, and he's staying as a big right hand by Negron. Right hand lead landed. No damage from the Garza. A good punch by Negron. Now he digs to the body and he just missed with a sharp right hook. It could have ended. Now he lands with a right hook. Now he's backing up. Jaime Garza and Negron is Garza in trouble. Well, this is the wall we were There's looking for. There's a good for, left hand by Negron. This is the wall we were looking for, Tim. They're both banging away. A good left hook by Garza. Another left hook by Garza. Negron bobbing and weaving a little bit more. The style that Emil Griffith wanted them to, to follow against this taller opponent. Still a little too straight up, Tim. He's got, to, he's got to bend those knees. Garza trying to keep that punching distance. Neither fighter scoring effectively in that exchange. Negron is not showing as much fire inside as I thought he would, Tim. Left hook to the side of the head by Negron. He dissipated most of the shock of that blow. And now Negron with a combination scoring inside. A left hook back from Garza. Under a minute to go, round two. These are two kids that really want to get up there, Tim. Really want that championship fight. Number two rated Garza. Number seven rated Carmelo Negron. New York against Los Angeles. Under 30 seconds we go on round number two. It has been the slugfest we expected. It'll be a great surprise if they can go the distance. Left hook landed by Negron. Trying to stay close to Garza. Final seconds of round two. A right uppercut, not much on it. Scored by Garza. Left hook back. Right hand left. Round number three, Carmelo Negron coming back well in round number two, and uh, Jimmy Montoya working his corner as the cut man did a good job between rounds. Between rounds, Emil Griffith told, uh, <laughs> told Negron, when Negron, he says, you have to work inside, you have to work inside. You took his best punches and you're still here, now you can take the fight over. <clears throat> in Garza's corner, Benny Giorgino said, you're going to have to jab a little more, start boxing a little more. So let's see what happens. Garza in white, the shorter Negron in red. 22 years of age, each fighter. Garza in 34 with 32 knockouts. Negron, 18 and 1. All of his victories by the four Up to this point, Negron is more effective inside because he's throwing real short punches, and when Jaime has a tendency to wing his shots inside. They're a lot harder, but they, they don't land as often. Certainly the toughest opponent that Garza has faced. And he lands a good solid left hook right where that cut is, at the corner of the right eyebrow of Negron. Well, he has to be surprised, Garza, because anybody else he's ever hit with that punch is gone. And Negron is still there and still dangerous. 3rd round action scheduled for 10. The winner is certainly in line for a title shot at either Wilfredo Gomez or Leo Cruz, the two champions. Well, Tim, we always say the fans make the fights, and I'm sure the fans would like to see either one of these kids fight for the championship of the world. They're exciting fighters. Great opportunity for us to show them to you here on CBS Sports Saturday today. McGrone landed that right hand with Garza backing up. 
their first national television exposure, and, and we were convinced that uh, boxing fans would enjoy seeing these two young men because they are two of the very best. Under a minute to go, round three. Verizon missing. Oh, that's he has McGrown backing up. McGrown can't back up. He's got to move in, move underneath. We are seeing Garza starting his assaults with the jab more than he had in the first couple of rounds, following the instructions of his trainer, Jackie McCoy. McGrown missing with that right hand. And Paid for it with a left hook back, raised off his nose. More blood from the cut now. McGrown pours in, lands a short right hand. Digging to the body of Garza. Under 30 seconds to go. Down to 20 now. Round three. I wouldn't like this uh, fight decided by a cut, Tim. It's, it's a tough break for McGlone to be cut. I just hope they can take care of it in the corner. That took the ear of McGlone from hard-punching Jaime Garza. Round number four. And McGlone came out right from the Stool throwing punches. There is some swelling over the left eye of Jaime Garza and White. And of course, the, if you just joined us, a cut, a cut that came in the first round over the right eye, right at the corner. Uh, Carmelo Negron and Red. Tim, I've never seen a fighter get more leverage on a left hook than Garza does. He gets tremendous leverage, a tremendous snap on that left hook. Negron counter punching well in that last exchange. Trying to get inside, Garza trying to keep the distance. It's a classic battle of two tough punchers, different styles uh, by virtue of their different physiques. 17 consecutive knockouts for Jaime Garza, the last man to stay in there with him was Luis Avila in May of 1980, went the distance for losing the decision to Garza. Tim Negron blocked that one left hook and it actually lifted him up in the air. That's the power of Garza's punches. Another winging left by Garza got through, but Negron stays right there with him, punching back. Negron is the short man, and he's depending on the jab, Tim. It's a strange thing. Garza is not jabbing at all. He's trying to hook all the time, and Negron is moving in behind the jab. There's the jab again by Negron. Another one. Right hand Robert Negron, and then left hook back. Sends him into the ropes. He has him in trouble, Tim. Garza with Negron back into the Garza corner here in round four. Trying to find that one clean punch. He lands a straight right hand. But McGrone punching back. Garza stays there with him. McGrone finally gets off the ropes, trying to stay glued to the body of Garza. One thing, Garza's not worried about pacing himself, Tim. He lets it all hang out. He's finally. thrown a lot of punches. McGrone is tired also. They're both tired right now, Tim. Yes, they were. They both took a little rest there. A lot of hard punching here in the early going, as we expected. And Richard Green, another warning to McGrone to keep the punches up under a minute to go in round four. 122 pounders and bang away like middleweights. Garza, good combination. Left jab straight right behind it. McGlone is tired, Tim. He's tired. Well, he's never had to work this hard. Even in... Uh, Fights that have gone a little longer than this. He's not had opponents who are punching back with the strength and power of Negron. It must be a little frustrating to Garza not to see Negron drop. There have been no knockdowns. Under 30 seconds to go in round four. Negron lands a combination. More blood from that cut over his right eye. Final seconds of round number four. Round number five, Jaime Garza and White, Carmelo Negron and Red, and the doctor, Donald Romeo of the Nevada Commission, came into the corner to uh, check the cut over the right eye of Carmelo Negron and has allowed him to continue. Jimmy Montoya doing the cleanup job between rounds effectively. We're in the fifth round, with Garza having the edge as we see it. Another warning to Negron to keep the punches up against the taller Garza. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line at the end of this round. We'll go to a 30-second station break. Right hand scored by Garza. While we have Garza ahead, Garza appears to uh, be fighting with more caution here as he knows that uh, this is some 
tough hombre that he's in there with. Looks like there might be a cut now by the left eye of Negron. Bleeding a little bit from the nose as well. And yes, there is. But from a cut in the corner of the left eye. In his only loss, he was cut by Bernabe Montanez. Tim right Gaza is not on Gaza is not only a good puncher, Tim. He's a good mover. He takes that little slip over to the right, sets you up for that hook beautifully. He's more than a puncher, Tim. He's a good fighter. The grown score to the left jab coming in. Grown having to uh, gamble a little bit more going in there, but again, not enough movement. And giving uh, Garza a target for those vicious long-range punches. And Negron has lost all his snap right now, Tim. Well, he has to—he has to get something to encourage him. He has to land one big shot or cut Jaime because right now he feels like a loser. Jaime landing a left and a right. Garza was cut in his last fight. Tenth round knockout. Negron landed two big right hands, Tim. Those are the kind of punches he needs to put him back in the fight. Under a minute to go in round number five of the scheduled ten round Super Bantamweight bout. Guards are trying to muscle Negron around a little bit more, and now the referee Richard Green has asked for the doctor Donald Romeo to come in and examine the cuts to the right and left eye, and that's it. It has been stopped here in the fifth round on cut. A technical knockout for sharp shooting Jaime Garza. A disappointment for Carmelo Negron, but Garza, who opened the cut over the right eye in the first round, opened another in the fifth round over the left eye of Carmelo Negron, and he remains undefeated. 35 and 0, Jaime Garza. From Los Angeles. We were waiting for the return. That uh, that was some tough customer. I'm sure he expected him to drop. You landed a lot of big bombs. Yeah, I hit him some uh, very hard hard punches, but he took them. And all I, I got, all I could do is just work until the referee. I I cut him in the first round with that left hook. And after that, I, I figured, you know, I had him. So. One thing can be said for sure is that uh, both the cuts were open by punches. There was there was no suggestion, uh, and it was obvious both times. So you have a, a good feeling about your punching power. At least they opened the cuts, and it, the fight between two tough competitors didn't end because of uh, an accidental butt. No, it, it was there were both punches. One was the left hook, and one was the right hand. And uh, I knew I, I cut him right after I hit him with the right. I saw the cut slide open. So he was a very tough guy, and. I just keep on going and hopefully I'll get a title shot. Did he hurt you at all? Uh, a couple of times he stunned me, but uh, I recovered. You know, I was in good shape. You sure did. Benny Giorgino's manager is here. Benny, uh, obviously your number two contender, uh, still unbeaten. Uh, title picture is ahead. Which route would you like to take if you had the choice? I like to take the route that will get him a championship fight of the world. You know, whichever one will uh, honor it. Uh, this is a third-rated uh, fighter that he fought and third-rated fighter that he knocked out. And what more can you ask for him? He's a pleasing fighter. He's a good fighter. We just hope that somebody will put the package together. I think it would be a great, great title fight. Benny, most people would say that uh, Wilfredo Gomez would be a much tougher fight for him than Leo Cruz. I don't think either one of them, uh, uh, I can't uh, say that one is going to be tougher than the other. They'd both be tough fights because they're, they're champions, and, and to take away a title, you've really got to get in there and take it away. But I think that Jaime uh, showed tonight with a real good fighter that he can handle him. I thought that he was winning handily. He cut him up, and they stopped it wisely, and that's... Okay, regular. Benny. Jaime, uh, would you have a, a preference? You know both those fighters. You've watched them on television, Gomez or Cruz. Well, just like my manager said, it don't matter. Either one would, would, I'd be happy to fight either one of them. Well, you put on a great show here today for all of the fans we have are happy to have the opportunity. So the victory put Garza's record up to 35-0 and 0 with 33 knockouts. And over two-thirds of the stoppages came within the first two rounds. Uh, the accolades became coming fast and furious from insiders and fans alike. Uh, his manager called him uh, the toughest, hardest punching fighter you'll ever see. Announcer Gil Clancy, he was, he was often noted for his hyperbole, but he stated that he had never seen anyone get so much leverage on a left hook in his entire lifetime, and he called Jaime Garza one of the hardest hitters he'd ever seen. So talk of a big money match with uh, Wilfredo Gomez began, but Gomez would move up in weight to the featherweight division, 
and Garza would take on Bobby Berna for the vacant WBC Super Bantamweight title. Wearing white trunks with red stars. Formerly of Rio Grande Valley in the great state of Texas, now fighting out of Los Angeles, California. A trim and ready 122 pounds. A young man that has done everything asked of him in the boxing game, scoring 37 straight wins, 35 of these by knockout, rated number one by the WBC, Jaime Garza. Everybody wants to see very good fighting. Remember, uh, I said, good luck. Look in the corner, it went for the bell. Okay. All right, we're just about set to go. The tail of the tape. To see the age difference, just one year, one inch in height, a couple of pounds in weight, and one inch in reach. Everything there in favor of Bobby Berna. Jaime Gaza, though, it's his knockout record versus... The fellow that is supposed to be very elusive and an excellent boxer. Don't forget, Burn is a southpaw. That was the word on him. As he comes out here, jabbing away with his right hand. Round one, scheduled 4-12. This title, don't forget, is the one vacated by Wilfredo Gomez. Gomez defended this title 17 times. Gaza able to get through with the right hand already in the early going here. Scores again with the right hand. You can see it's a heavy right that's bouncing the head. Bobby Berner, supposedly excellent hand speed, but to this point it doesn't look anywhere near as fast as the hand speed of Jaime Gaza. This is Round one, scheduled for 12. World Super Bantamweight Championship at stake here. I'm Bob Sheridan. So glad that you're with us for this title fight. Hope you've enjoyed the season. And already, Gaza has been in trouble. But it blinks his eyes, shakes his head, and comes out for more. Wow, with the left hand. You can tell Bernard's had a lot of fights because... Well, he was nailed pretty good there, and we thought he was in more trouble than what he eventually showed to be. He certainly sh shows the ability to take a shot. The self-paw style of Werner has caused no problem for Gaza whatsoever. In fact, the way he carries his left hand down, it leaves him open for the right hand of Gaza. And Gaza's taking advantage of it. He just paused with the left hand and then drops that lightning right. Bernie, you can see, does that speed as he walks into an uppercut. Eyes very clear. As soon as Gaza comes out with any sort of punch, Bernie drops his hands immediately, so he's going to be a target for that right hand. Don't forget, you're talking about fighters that weigh around 120 pounds. Gurney in at 120, guys a couple of pounds heavier, 122. Nails him on the forward again. Walks into a left hand, but scores again. Closing seconds of round one and a good round one. Mighty Gaza, he's there with the right hand. Counts up the four, he takes his standing eight count. It's up to eight. And the round should be just about over, and it is. See what happens, you try to pick it up. 
a right hand out of no place. He was working on uppercuts. All of a sudden, the right hand dropped him. Watch it from this angle. As the left hand gets through, now you see Gaza will start to drop his hands, and then all of a sudden, the right hand, there's the uppercut, bang, right over it. The right hand catches him. Really surprised him, as you see his eyes are... Gaza cruising right along there with a 10-9 type of round, and then all of a sudden, Bernard drops him and turns it around. He usually scores any time he's a knockdown, he scored 10-8, but he was behind in the round at that point, so he wins the round. 10-9 over Gaza. Round one, a surprise, a knockdown. Gaza never off his feet in his career. He's never lost the fight, don't forget. He's knocked out 35 of his opponents. He can't allow himself to get careless. Now we know what they mean by lightning hand speed of Berna. He sees an opportunity, no matter where it is, and he drops it. I know Gaza can't get careless. He'll take the 48 count. Remember, the three knockdown rule has been waived. Now both fellows have been down. That'll give some confidence back to Gaza. Vernon's tagged again. Gaza doesn't want to get too careless. Another good left hook gets caught. There's a left hand down, he goes. I don't know if he can get up from this one. He's really tagged. Up the four, five. Six, he's still rubbery leg. Seven, eight. It's up to eight. He says, yes, let's continue. Does he's like Carrera. Now twice. Pump with the left hand and a left uppercut. Wild with the right hand. Another right. Through the ropes he comes. He's right on top of it. His third time down. The referee says, no. He'll take no more punishment. A second round. TKO win for Jaime Garza, who wins the WBC. Now the vulnerability Garza showed in the burnabout only helped him as fans saw him as an exciting a kill or be killed fighter. So another nationwide televised fight would come and this time it would be against the undefeated and 5'11 uh, Felipe Orozco. Pelea en la que está del, en juego el título mundial de los pesos superplumas. Y Luis, ahí está Pancho Rosales en la esquina de Orozco. Precisamente eh, tengo entendido que Orozco hace aproximadamente 3, 4 meses se trasladó a la Ciudad de México y estaba siendo entrenado por don Francisco Pancho Rosales, uno de los managers más veteranos no solamente de México, sino del mundo. Primer round, Jorge. Felipe Orozco con el pantaloncillo oscuro, casi negro, es un azul muy oscuro, el que trae este espigado zurdo de Barranquilla, Colombia. Y Jaime Garza, invicto en 39 peleas con 37 knockouts, está con el pantaloncillo blanco. Garza, como les comentábamos hace un rato, no ha visto actividad en bastante tiempo, casi un año. Y en más de eso no ha expuesto el cinturón. Porque bueno, tuvo una pelea, hará cosa de unos cuatro meses en Los Ángeles, en el Auditorio Olímpico, pero en la que no estaba de por medio el título y en la que solamente le duró pues, tres rounds, cuatro en el último uh, Orozco, es, la última pelea de Orozco precisamente fue en diciembre en Barranquilla. No me acuerdo el nombre del oponente en ese momento, pero yo contra un boxeador de, de la capital de México y lo noqueó en eh, siete rounds. Vamos a ver qué tan hábil es para trabajar el jab, en este caso de mano derecha, para él que es zurdo, porque si puede imponerlo, entonces tendrá la mitad de la batalla ganada, aunque ya los bombazos están silbando por las cabezas. Seamos buena izquierda de Felipe Orozco sobre el rostro de Jaime Garza, el campeón del mundo. Ahí está Garza presionando todo el tiempo yendo hacia adelante Garza y cuando tira un golpe Jaime Garza lo tira con todo el cuerpo, lleva toda la dinamita de la que él es capaz detrás de cada envío. 
no hace lo mismo Orozco. Y de ahí contra las cuerdas conecta buena combinación sobre el rostro de Jaime Garza y de nuevo le repiquetea con la derecha. Le va a costar trabajo al campeón del mundo entrar en distancia porque le sacan mucho alcance y de nuevo la izquierda del colombiano. Hasta el momento un buen primer episodio para Felipe Orozco, el retador de Barranquilla, Colombia. Y Garza presionando, pero ya con menos vehemencia, con menos ahínco. De nuevo se lleva una derecha al rostro. Y no parece que va a ser fácil de dominar el colombiano Felipe Orozco. Está por terminar el primer episodio. Hallando ese swing con el pantaloncillo blanco. Originario de Texas, pero residente aquí en California, enfrentándose... Felipe Orozco de Barranquilla, Colombia, el más alto de los dos. Jorge, ahí hay algo interesante en la carrera de Garza y es que ha enfrentado a cuatro zurdos y a los cuatro boxeadores de guardia equivocada los han noqueado antes del cuarto round. O sea, es un boxeador que se desenvuelve muy bien ante los boxeadores de guardia zurda. Pues aquí se ha llevado dos o tres bombazos de parte de Felipe Orozco. Quien de nuevo lo conectó recibiendo hace un momento, aunque parece que Garza como que empieza a entrar en distancia. De sus golpes pasando cada vez más cerca del blanco. Y además, más calmado se ve Garza, más asentado. Aunque de nuevo ahí Orozco metiendo las manos. Y de nuevo se lleva una fuerte izquierda Garza a la cabeza y Garza está cazando, cazando, pero en la casa se está llevando buenos golpes. Y de inmediato en cuanto va a dar contra las cuerdas, Luis de la esquina le gritan, sálgase. Porque no es precisamente el lugar que más le conviene a Orozco el quedarse estático y presentar un blanco fijo a Jaime Garza. Garza es un boxeador de mucho poncho, especialmente con la mano derecha. Tiene una tremenda pegada con la derecha, así de que lo mejor que puede hacer el colombiano es salirse por piernas y boxear de, en el centro del ring, no meterse a las cuerdas. Ahí trastabilló Jaime Garza, mitad resbalón, mitad golpe. Y finalmente descarga su primer golpe en serio, Jaime Garza, y rápidamente dañó a Felipe Orozco. Y de inmediato sintió la pesadez de puños de Jaime Garza, que da una vuelta de campana y a la salida lo prende con buena combinación Felipe Orozco. Un giro completo, 360 grados, dio Garza de tan duro que tiró y ahí conecta una bárbara derecha. Que le dolió a Felipe Orozco y en, en un segundo perdió toda su movilidad. Está por terminar el segundo episodio cuando está la tormenta en serio, el cambio de golpes que no favorece más que a Jaime Garza, el campeón del mundo. Jaime Garza defendiendo por primera vez su corona en contra de... El colombiano Felipe Orozco. Garza empezando a presionar de nuevo y Orozco regresando a su táctica del principio del combate, pelear a distancia conectando jabs. Pero cada vez mejor en cuanto a distancia Jaime Garza. En la izquierda de Orozco lo prendió recibiendo. Este Jaime Garza aguanta mucho y tiene tremendo instinto para el boxeo. No le arredra a recibir golpes como esa izquierda que se llevó. Ahí, tremendo gancho abajo y se derrumba pesadamente Felipe Orozco. Un solo golpe, ni siquiera requirió de combinación. 
Y el referee dice, se acabó. Fulminante knockout de Jaime Garza para concluir la pelea y para retener el título mundial de los pesos superplumas. Yo me quedé con la impresión de que Orozco tal vez podía haberse levantado y, y dado un poco más de pelea, pero pues no fue así y Jaime Garza retiene el campeonato. Vamos a ver la repetición, Jorge. Es un hopper que lo entró exacto precisamente en la mandíbula. Y no se pudo ver si interpuso el referee. Estaba tratando de esquivar algo. Eh, Orozco agachó la cabeza y cuando la tenía abajo, ahí fue donde lo prendió Jaime Garza. Aquí en este ángulo se va a ver mejor. Ahí está el, el upper. Y se le doblaron las piernas, se fue a la lona. Y bueno, pues cada boxeador sabe cómo se siente. Yo, yo aquí estoy diciendo, a lo mejor era demasiada la potencia y el efecto que había tenido el golpe y, y no se pudo parar. En fin, vamos a, a escuchar la decisión oficial del desenlace de este pleito. Aunque no, no hay tarjetas que contar, usted ya sabe quién ganó. Benny Giorgino, pues feliz, escuchando la entrevista que le están haciendo ahí los compañeros periodistas de la ciudad de Miami a, a Jaime Garza, quien retiene su corona y pues, tal vez con esto sí aumente un poco el valor de su siguiente pelea. Por lo pronto sería bueno es que pelee más, más seguidamente. One minute, eight seconds of the third round, and the winner by knockout, still undefeated, and still the World Boxing Council Super Battleway Champion, Jaime Garza. Garza was riding high after this victory. He seemed destined to become a television weekend warrior for CBS Sports, but his next battle would be his toughest test. He would take on Juan Kid Mesa. In a second title defense, uh, Mesa was a veteran at 41 wins against five losses. He had already challenged Wilfredo Gomez for the title. He was also more experienced than Garza when it came to psychological warfare, as at the weigh-in, he informed Garza that he would finish him early uh, because he had to save his energy for the wild sex he would be having with Garza's mother. Now, the insult enraged Garza, and he had to be held back by his handlers, but the damage was done and Garza was thrown off his game just enough. He would start the fight angry and he would fight even more recklessly than he usually did. Against Juan Meza, 40 and 6, 31 knockouts. He's 28 years of age. He weighed in at 121 and one half pounds, as did Garza. There is our tail of the tape and a slight reach advantage to Meza that should not be a factor. Scoring by three judges at ringside: Louis Rivera from the Bronx, New York; Carol Castellano from New York City; Bernie Friedkin from New York, as well. And the referee who will not figure in the scoring: Johnny Obianco from New York. Scoring on the 10-point must system. Nine points or fewer to the loser of a round, and there can be a 10-10 even round. There will be a mandatory eight count. The count continues after the bell, except in the 12th He's round. The the of tonight's count. As we hear Johnny the three knockdown rule with his final instructions. It's not an effect. If you score a knockdown, go to a neutral corner. Do not leave the corner until I wave you out. Watch your low blows, kidney punches, rabbit punches, they are foul. I want you to break and set back, flee when I command you to break. You shake hands now, come on, boxing at the bell, good luck to both of them. 12 rounds, the title distance for the WBC, and Garza's corner as manager Benny Giorgino is 
trainer John Montez, father of former uh, fine lightweight star John Montez Jr. and Jimmy Montoya is the manager and trainer of Juan Mesa. He also is one of the most prominent men in boxing, as is Giorgino. Jimmy Montoya. And we're ready to go with round number one. Five foot nine, Mesa. Five foot seven, seven, Garza. Actually, two tall guys for 122 pounds. And the first left hook is landed by Garza to the face of Mesa. Garza in white, Mesa in red. These two Californians traveling all the way across America to settle a title in Kingston, New York. Garza was born in Santa Cruz and raised in Texas. He's an American and the Mexican Mesa now divides his time between his hometown of Mexicali in Mexico and Los Angeles. There's a solid left that sends Mesa down. A left hook by Jaime Garza directed to the neutral corner and Mesa takes all of the eight seconds to get up. So a startling flash knockdown by Jaime Garza with Mesa taking another left hand and now he scores a left. Tim Garza is usually the guy that's susceptible early. He's been on the deck four times, always in an early round and has gotten up to win. This time the other guy's on the deck. And also you notice the, small, the smaller waist these guys might have the field out process. Tim Mesa was so calm when he got knocked down, I was afraid he wasn't going to get up. I did, too. I had the same thought. Gil, I didn't know whether he was really stunned or whether he was totally in control, and apparently he was in control as he's come back strongly. He took the full eight seconds on the seat of his pants and then got himself ready for battle. Tim, it's quite a statement to say that the guy is the hardest puncher in boxing today, pound for pound. But in my opinion, that's what Garza is. He can really get you out of there with one punch. I don't know too many other fighters that can do that. Overhand right landed by Mesa. Caught Garza backing out. And there's a good solid left jab by Mesa. He has rallied quite well from the early knockdown. Good left hook to the body by Mesa, Tim. Garza's making the mistake of falling in with his hands down. There's another left hook that sends Mesa down. Do they count that or not? Evidently not. No, he threw him that. down, Tim. No knockdown. Johnny Lobianco, the referee from New York. Tim, the, the big difference that I see so far is that Garza is much the shorter puncher of the two. He'll beat Mesa to the punch. Mesa is a wide puncher. Oh, a big left hand. Now, this defeat would pretty much end his career, although he re wouldn't retire until 11 years later. Uh, Garza would later admit that he suffered from a little bit of burnout. Uh, he would remain out of the sport for over 14 months after that Mesa defeat, and when he returned, the, the fire was no longer there. He would eventually lose against a journeyman, Daryl Thigpen, and he would eventually deteriorate into a stepping stone for the likes of uh, featherweight contenders like Georgie Navarro and eventual champion uh, Marcos Villasana. 
uh, there would be retirements and comebacks, and he would ultimately uh, end, retire with a record of 48 wins against uh, six losses. And looking at his career, a lot of historians will probably look back and, and see the Juan Kid Mesa fight as the fight that ruined him. But, you know, in all candor, it looks as if he hit his ceiling, and he probably progressed as far as he could have. But he did score some spectacular knockouts. He got a lot of hype behind him in, in the California scene. So he should be remembered in boxing history a, a little bit more than he is.